thing, right? And it tells you in the Ungers, the, the New Ungers Bible Dictionary says, dogs is a name that was used by the Israelites pertaining to the Gentiles because of their profaneness and because of homosexuality in the Greek Empire, in the Roman Empire, right? So, when you look at profaneness, who's profane? Look at... Uh, Hebrews, the 12th chapter, and the 16th verse. Since we're in the Greek Empire, it says, Hebrews 12, 16 said, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, as Esau, who for one morsel of meat, red meat, sold his birthright. So, let you know, different means that you can go to to find out the same information. Bible, dictionaries, and so forth. And the Bible says it. So, going back to 1 Maccabees, the fourth chapter, verse 44, it says, And when as they consulted what to do with the altar of burnt offerings, which was profane, by a profane people, as we just read, they thought it best to pull it down, lest it should be a reproach, a disgrace to them, because the heathen had defiled it, wherefore they pulled it down, and laid up the stones in the mountain of the temple in a convenient place, until, they, until there should come a prophet to show what should be done with them. So they put it in a certain place, Unclean place, as it says, until a prophet comes to say what to do with it. Then they took whole stones according to the law and built a new altar according to the former. They built a new altar, made up the sanctuary and the things that were within the temple and hollowed the courts, cleaned it all up. They made also new holy vessels and into the temple they brought the candlestick and the altar of burnt offerings and of incense and of the table. And upon the altar they burned incense and the lamps that were upon the candlestick they lighted that they might give light in the temple. Furthermore, they set the loaves upon the table and spread out the vials and finished all the works which they had begun to make, making the temple back to where it should be. Now on the five and twentieth day of the ninth month, which is the month of the twelfth, Esau's twelfth month, but it's the five and twentieth day of the ninth month, which is called the month Kaslu, which is the twelfth month that we know of today, which would be Christmas. You know when that day is. That's what he's talking about. In the 148th year, they rose up beat times in the morning, quickly in the morning, and offered sacrifice according to the law upon the new altar of burnt offerings, which they had made. This is what it says. Look at which time and what day the heathen had profaned it. It was the 25th day. Remember they killed the women and so forth? Burnt the abominable things on the sanctuary and so forth, the altar and so forth, in the sanctuary. Even in that, was it dedicated with songs and cisterns and harps and cymbals? Then all the people fell upon their faces, worshiping and praising the most high power of heaven, who had given them good success. And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days. So this holy convocation is for eight days, y'all. Not just one day, but eight days. They kept the dedication of the altar eight days and offered burnt offerings with gladness and sacrificed the sacrifice of deliverance and praise 
they decked also the forefront of the temple with crowns of gold. So remember, they got a lot of spoils, but you know, they got riches. So they decked. They decked the forefront, the front, front of the temple with crowns of gold and with shields. Shields, y'all. We had shields. Like the shield of David. And the gates and the chambers, they renewed and hanged doors upon them. Thus were there very great gladness among the people. For that the reproach of the heathen was put away. The reproach of, first and foremost, the, the Edomites and that wicked king, Antiochus Epiphanes, was put away. And all the ones that came under him was put away. Moreover, Judas and his brethren, with the whole congregation of Israel, ordained that the days of the dedication of the altar should be kept in their season from year to year by the space of eight days, from the five and twentieth day of the month, Kaslu, with mirth and gladness. So, tomorrow will be the five and twentieth day of our month, if you count from the new moon. Some are second, uh, should be celebrating it next month. You see what I'm saying? As long as we're doing it, you know, we're rehearsing and all praise to the Most High that we are coming back to our culture. And looking at this, and doing what we're supposed to do. And not following, you know, the destruction of our people on thanksgiving. I don't care what you call it. Giving thanks, you know, celebration or whatever. It's still a day of slaughter for our people. Fourth of July, Independence Day, right? Same thing. This is what we're dealing with here. In honoring the deliverance of our people and getting our sanctuary back to praise the Most High. Listen. That's why you're going to see that we as a people coming back to our laws that the Most High gave us to follow moral laws, civil laws, dietary laws, and ceremonial laws now. It's a problem with the other nations that's caught up in their Idolatry is, and that's through these religions. They would have a problem with us, just as it is. You'll see. We're reading about it right now. Nothing new under the sun. Moreover, Judas and his brethren, verse fifty-nine, with the whole congregation of Israel, ordained that the days of the dedication of the altar should be kept in their season from year to year by the space of eight days. From the five and twentieth day of the month, Kaslu, with mirth and gladness. Supposed to be a joyful time right now. We're supposed to be really having a good time. You know, get rid of all that sadness, all that, that negative that you have aside. This is a time that we're supposed to be a time of mirth and gladness. At that time also, they built it up the Mount Zion with high walls and strong towers round about. Like to protect us lest the Gentiles should come and tread it down as they had done before. So they built up, you know, a fortress around Mount Zion and they set there a garrison to keep it and fortified Breath Shira to preserve it that the people might have a defense against Idumia. A defense against Idumia. Now, if you don't know what Idumia is, then you're just going to read it and just go over it? No. Idumia means Edom, Rome, the Edomites, the so-called white man. So now, First Maccabees 5. Now when the nations round about heard that the altar was built, that we done cleaned up the altar, our sanctuary, these other nations round about heard that the altar was built, and the sanctuary renewed as before, it displeased them very much. That's what I say. Understand, he's like, I read to you how the heathen know that we're in the captivity for our iniquity. They're cool as long as you're being wicked. But when you start to come back to righteousness, they don't like that. You see, they, and the nation round about heard that the altar was built. And the sanctuary renewed as before, it displeased them very much. Wherefore, they thought to destroy the generation of Jacob 
that was among them. But we scattered among all these provinces and so forth. Different lands that, remember, he divided his four uh, generals into these different lands. So we among all these lands. So that all of, of us Israelites that was among them, they thought to destroy the generations of Jacob. That was among them. And thereupon they began to slay, that means to kill and destroy the people. That's the Israelites that were among them. Then Judas fought against the children of Esau in Idumea. Can't get no clearer than that. Judas Maccabees fought against the so-called white man. I mean, look up Idumea. It means Edom, Rome. At our Arba time, because they besieged Israel. And he gave them a great overthrow and abated their courage and took their spoils, took everything they had. And he remembered the injury of the children of being. See, he remembered the, the injury of the children of being, who had been a snare and an offense unto the people, and that they lay in wait for them in the ways. He shut them up, therefore, in the towers and encamped against them and destroyed them utterly and burned the towers of that place with fire and all that were therein. See? Afterward, he passed over to the children of Ammon. These are the Japanese people, indigenous, I might say, where he found a mighty power and much people with the Motheus, their captain. So he fought many battles with them till at length they were discomfited before him and he, and he smoked them. See? So now we're going to look at 2 Mac, Maccabees, the 10th chapter. We're going to conclude with this. But I mean, it's good reading. It's, it's, you know, it's our story. We're going to look at 2 Maccabees 10. We're going to read 1 to 5. It said, now Maccabeus and his company, the Most High guiding them, recovered the temple and the city. But the altars which the heathen had built in the open street and also the chapels, they pulled down. And having cleansed the temple, they made another altar and striking stones, they took fire out of them and offered a sacrifice after two years and set forth incense and lights and showbread. When that was done, they fell flat down and brought the most high that they might come no more into such troubles. Besought the Most High that they might come no more into such troubles. But if they sin any more against him, that he himself would chasten them with mercy, and that they might not be delivered into the blasphemous and barbarous nations. But hey, we know that's not what happened. We go through them curses in Deuteronomy 28. Verse 15 to 68, because we went into their hands again. He said, hey, most I shall bring thee into Egypt, which means captivity, slavery, and bondage. Do not 28, 68. Again, another time with ships. By the way, where I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there, when you go on these ships, you shall be sold unto your enemies for, for slave men and slave women. No man shall buy you, bond men and bond women. Slave men and slave women. No man shall buy you. No man going to redeem us from the condition that the Most High put us in. Because we put ourselves in it by not following his laws, statutes, commandments. So verse 4. 2 Maccabees, the 10th chapter. When that was done, they fell flat down and besought the Most High that they might come no more into such troubles. But if they sinned any more against him, that he himself would chasten them with mercy and that they might not be delivered into the blasphemous and barbarous nations. You know that? The blasphemous and barbarous nations. Now upon the same day that the strangers profaned the temple, on the very same day it was cleansed again, even the five and twentieth day of the same month, which is Caslu. And they kept eight days with gladness, as in the Feast of the Tabernacles, remembering that not long before time, they had held the Feast of the Tabernacles, 
when as they wandered in the mountains and dens like beasts. Therefore they bare branches and fair bowls and palms also and sang songs unto him that had given them good success in cleansing this place. They ordained also by a common statute and decree that every year those days should be kept of the whole nation of the Jews. That's why we're doing it now. And this was the end of Antiochus called Epiphanes. Now will we declare the acts of Antiochus in Pecuador, who was the son of this wicked man, gathering briefly the calamities of the wars. And that's all I want to deal with that. I want to go back to St. John. You see, that wicked king Antiochus Epiphanes, that Edomite king Antiochus Epiphanes, done away with. So now we're going to look at Back to where we started from, St. John 10 and 22. That's when we dedicated the temple back. So now we're in the Roman Empire. From the Greeks to the Roman Empire. That Amastak of Shai is in. Because he didn't come in the Greek Empire, he came in the Roman Empire. So now from St. John 10, 22 it says, and it was it was at Jerusalem, the feast of, dedica of the dedication. And it was winter. See, it's around this time. And Amashagal Shai walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Remember, it's the Feast of Dedication. Well, we just went over when we got our temple dedicated back to us. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt if thou be Hamashiach? Tell us plainly. Very important. They ain't asking him if you be Jesus, you be Yahweh Shai, or any other name that you'll use for that name. He wanted to know, and they wanted to know, are you Hamashiach? Tell us plainly. Hamashiach Hamashiach answered them, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So his sheep going to hear his voice, and they're going to follow him. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Ain't nobody going to be able to pluck his sheep out of his hand, he said. My father which gave them me. So we, the most I have to give you to a Mashiach is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. He said, I and my father are one. They agree. So the most high is greater than all, he said. And nobody's able to pluck Mashiachoshai's sheep out of the Most High's hand. He said, I and my father are one. They agree. Like, I agree with the Most High and the Mashiachoshai, and you should too. So, I'm going to conclude right there. So, that's a little bit on the Feast of Dedication. Us getting our temple back, our sanctuary back. If you like information or further information, you can reach me, Priest Star Wam, at P.O. Box 20012, Long Beach, California, 90801-3012. Or my email address is mready for you, M R E A D Y for you, F O R Y O U at AOL.com. And if you like to donate, uh, something to the ministry you can use cash app dollar sign one two three thawam t-h-a-a-h-w-a-m or paypal www.paypal.me forward slash shield of wisdom be very much appreciated i thank all those that uh do support the ministry a few of you that do most love and most blessings to you. Most high be with you by some of my shakyo shy. And all you that do and don't, it's okay. Most high got this. Always. And with that, I say shalom and I'm out. All praises to the most high.